July 25th, I dropped my daughters off to this babysitter's house and um, I went to work. Hey, I need a Mercedes drive, um, and I need an ambulance here now. Okay, what's um, so. My son got, I didn't know that my son brought a gun home from my dad's house, and it fell out of the closet, and it shot the little girl that I'm babysitting. Okay. I need an ambulance now. Okay, so we're going to get your help out there, okay? Is she breathing? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Please hurry. Yes, ma'am, they're already coming, oh okay? God. Genesis, baby. Genesis. Nine-year-old girl is in the hospital after being shot. An eight-year-old girl was fighting for her life. A three-year-old boy accidentally shot and killed himself last night. Guns kill more kids in the U.S. than any other cause. More than cancer and now more than motor vehicle crashes. Kids in North Carolina are 51% more likely to die from guns compared to the national average. I take bullets out of children, sometimes day after day after day. <laughs> She's not gonna be in that room when I go check on her. And it's, it's hard. It's hard to accept. All of them could have been prevented. That's the thing. All of them could have been prevented. Something we've been covering frequently here at WRAL, guns. For some, these tragic stories are so common, they almost blur together. Yeah. And the fight for guns is so loud. Nation against gun violence. It drowns out meaningful change. I just wish we could take politics out of it. So how often are you bringing this issue up with your patients? I'm WRL investigative documentary reporter Kristen Severance. You know, with us grieving. I talk to families impacted by gun violence and experts across the state. They say there's a clear way to save kids, a solution with bipartisan support. First, unsecure firearms. That is a huge problem that we have. Kids know where parents keep their guns, even if parents think they don't. I mean, I'll just ask the question. Are you trying to take people's guns away? I do not want to take people's guns away. I want them to keep the guns that they have more safely secured. I am not anti-gun by far. However, if this gun is where it should be at, secured in a safe, we're not sitting here today. Welcome back to my channel. Before you get started, click that subscribe button. Today we're going to be doing like a dance. I love to get my mom famous on YouTube. I'm here on TikTok. So guys, follow my mom. On TikTok, okay? Good. Let's get to thousand followers. Please. Thank you, okay? Yes. Tell me about Genesis. What was she like? She was bubbly. She smiled. Oh my God, her smile. I will bless you and make your name great. She, she loved everybody. She loved TikTok. She loved to, to do dances on TikTok. If you're having a bad day, Genesis is going to make you laugh. Who she was in spirit really lit up the room no matter where she was. And that was my Genesis. That was her. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Oh, Jesus. I know it's a picture. Okay. It's a big picture of my baby, that beautiful smile. Fawn and Kimberly Dockery's eight-year-old daughter, Genesis, had a built-in best friend, her five-year-old sister, Amara. And they were two peas in a pod, everywhere together. Say, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Oh, Jesus loves you, nuts. Her and her sister, two little angels. Two little angels. Well, I'm Gilbert Bays, and I'm the Fayetteville reporter for WREL and have been here for more than 40 years. Gilbert didn't know the Dockery family until he started covering what happened on July 25th. Fawn dropped his girls off at their babysitter's house in Fayetteville. And 
It's something he had done on sporadically on other occasions into a safe environment, never had any uh, mention from his daughter, from Genesis or, or her sister, that something was not right at this house. They looked forward to going there. They looked forward to it. He had no reason to believe on this particular day that anything was going to be any different. And unfortunately, he was wrong. A short time after drop-off, Fawn received a frantic call from the babysitter. This babysitter telling me, screaming and crying, that she didn't know, she didn't know. And I'm like, you didn't know what? And Genesis has been shot. Hey, I don't hear no sirens. Where are the fire department sirens or ambulances? So I asked her, hey, have you called the ambulance? And she said, no, I called you. I said, get off the phone with me and save my daughter's life. The babysitter called 911 and told the operator what she said happened at the beginning of the call. My son brought, I didn't know that my son brought a gun home from my dad's house and it fell out of the closet and it shot the little girl that I'm babysitting. And again, at the very end of the call, right before she hung up. My son is the one that brought it home and I didn't know. Genesis was shot in the head. The eight-year-old was rushed to the hospital. She got shot on July 25th, and she passed away on July the 27th. And she was just four days, you know, short of her ninth birthday. One of the hardest things, and it's still hard, is accepting that it's real. Genesis is one of hundreds of kids over the last six years in North Carolina who died from gun violence. 600 kids have died since 2017, according to the Division of Juvenile Justice. That's 600 kids. They've got to find out how this happened, who's responsible. And it wasn't coming to light very quickly. And then it was revealed to him that the son of the mother that she he trusted came to the home with a gun from his grandfather who somehow knew the combination to the safe and got into the safe and brought the weapon over and was either showing it or somehow the weapon went off. I was told that this 11 year old kid went to the dad's house, her dad's house and brought a gun back that supposedly it fell off of a shelf and went off and shot my daughter. Is that what you think happened? No, I do not. What do you think happened? I think he pulled the trigger. Because there's no way that grandfather as a gun owner can tell me he believes that a gun fell and went off and the trajectory of that bullet came from falling from the ground. There's no way. The 11 year old is also part of a troubling trend in North Carolina. Five years ago, the number of juvenile crimes committed with a firearm was 4%. Last year, it was 13%. That's a 400% increase in four years. Tell me about what you learned regarding the 11 year old. One thing that we uncovered, we were able to find a picture of the 11 year old, who's now is 12, by the way on the internet, branching a weapon. And there are several videos circulating of this young juvenile holding a weapon very cavalier. Fawn believes the picture and videos show the 11 year old had a fascination with guns and his family knew and did nothing. Now we're being told that the picture that we have of the child on the internet was a BB gun but the BB gun is now turned into a real gun and an eight-year-old is dead. Weeks after Genesis died, there was no one in custody. Beyond the actual death of my daughter, that is the most tragic part of this to me and my family, that an eight-year-old child's life can be taken and nobody be put into custody. Not the babysitter who should have been supervising, not the gun owner who should have been responsible and knew where his gun was, and not the shooter himself. Nobody was put in custody. 
The Cumberland County Sheriff's Office eventually submitted a complaint with the Division of Juvenile Justice, alleging two counts of larceny of a firearm and one count of manslaughter were warranted against the 11-year-old. He was in juvenile custody until a judge ordered him released to a family member. We're in the front of the courthouse and the uh, sheriff's department in Cumberland County. Fawn attended every hearing. I have to go in this courtroom and look at this young man, oh, okay. see his mom and his grandfather, the babysitter and the gun owner, and hear her pathetic excuses. Constantly, they walk out of the courtroom just like me, like nothing took place, like they have no accountability, like my child wasn't killed at the residence by his gun. The 11-year-old entered the juvenile equivalent of a guilty plea and was placed on probation. No charges have been filed against his mother or grandfather. I want accountability. So now he has a daughter who is, is dead and no one being held accountable. And that's the heartbreak of this story for him. And a daughter and who witnessed it. Absolutely. What a difficult conversation to have. Beyond everybody in that house, she is a witness to the exact events of that day. How do you explain that your sister's not coming back? Sisters who Gilbert had unknowingly met before. After covering the story, he was sent a video from a neighbor from Halloween night in 2022, when Genesis and Amara went trick-or-treating at his house. A friend of the family shot that footage and sent it to him. And as soon as I saw it, I remembered how cute she was. This is a still picture of that moment. And I don't know what, if I had my crazy costume on like the, the uh, Martians were taking me away. I think that, that may have been the costume that I had on. And she was just so innocent and so polite. Then thankful for the candy. Never thought that I would do a story on her, and this was the last time I was going to see her alive. So we're here, Mercedes Drive. I'm going to go in and talk to the mom of the 11 year old. in Fayetteville right now. We were all set up to interview the babysitter. Well, then she canceled. So I've been texting with her back and forth. She said I could come to the house, talk to her in person. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go talk to the mom of the 11 year old. And even though she canceled earlier. Hi, I'm Kristen. She agreed to talk to me on the porch about the day Genesis was shot. Honestly, it's destroyed me. It's it destroyed my family. I'm in therapy, I'm in counseling. My son, he cries on a daily basis. Emotionally, it's messed him up bad too. And so did you know the gun was here when Fawn dropped off his daughters? No, absolutely not. I would never allow guns at my house. How did your son, how did the 11-year-old have a gun? Yeah, I didn't know it was at my house and my father should have changed his gun safe code, period. Never should have been left the same. It should have been changed. So your son stole the gun from your father's safe. He knew the code. I get, he said he figured the code out. She said her father never changed the code from when he first bought the safe. Her son found out and stole the gun. Like, if your child goes to a family member's house and they leave and they go for the weekend and they come back home, and they have their same little bag that they had clothes in. I mean, you don't think to check their bags. I questioned myself and I said, why didn't I check their bag? Why didn't I do this different? Why didn't I do that different? I still question myself every single day on things that I could have done different. Did you ever talk to your son about guns? Did you ever have a conversation with him about how dangerous they are? I mean, I've talked to my kids, all of my kids about safety, period. 
about guns, about knives, about anything. This is that photo, and WRL has decided not to identify him. But if you look, what he's holding right there, clearly a gun in his hand. Why do you think he did it? Why do you think your son took that gun? I was told that his friends would think he was cool. My first response was, if your friends think you're cool because you have a gun, then you have the wrong type of friends at school. You know, there are pictures of your son online with a gun. Tell me about that. No, I never knew they were existed. And the pictures of my son holding a gun was a BB gun that my father had gotten for my son, and I had taken it from him. I begged the cops to take that BB gun out of my house, and they told me they could. Before the shooting? No, after. So tell me about your dad, that part of it. When it comes to holding someone accountable, like who do you think should be held accountable? I mean, he should have changed the safe code, period. I don't care if he's 70 years old. I don't care if he's 30 years old. He is a gun owner. He knows to change a code so nobody will know it. She admits her son is to blame as well. At the end of the day, like, if he never would have put his hands on that gun, this never would have happened. If he would not have went into the gun safe, this wouldn't have happened. So, I mean, there's so many things, like, yes, he should have been charged with arson of a firearm. Because he did. He knew better. You knew Fawn for a long time, and I know you babysat the girls before. What do you want to say to the Dockery family? I'm sorry. I would give anything to be able to go back and change that day. <laughs> I would do anything to bring to us back. This story shows how many lives are forever changed by one senseless shooting death. That's why the babysitter even agreed to talk to me. And there are hundreds of these stories in North Carolina. Right now at six, a six-month-old baby is at the UNC Medical Center after being shot. An 11-year-old boy injured while sleeping after a home was sprayed with bullets. After a 10-year-old boy accidentally shot his one-year-old cousin. <laughs> WREL looked at statewide death records, finding since 2018, 521 kids under 18 died from guns in our state, including accidental shootings, homicides, and suicides. 15% of those who died were 11 years old or younger. We need to focus as a state on this to make sure that we can bring those numbers down. Why are these numbers so high? Well, there are a lot of guns in North Carolina, and a lot of them not safely stored. 42% of all households in the state of North Carolina own firearms. Of those 42% of households last year, 50% of, uh, of those households told us they did not safely store that firearm. Nearly 1.7 million homes have guns in North Carolina, and more than 840,000 homes have guns that are not safely stored. I'm not saying that guns are, are bad. Um, what we're trying to say is that Bad ownership or not responsible ownership is what's bad. William Lassiter told me more than 1,000 crimes were committed by juveniles involving a gun in 2019. In 2023, that number was more than 5,000. They found unsecured guns are getting stolen from homes and cars. In, in the city of Durham, 60% of the firearms that were stolen by juveniles were stolen from unlocked cars. So what we're trying to do is figure out how do we limit access to young people and to criminals to, to firearms. Many experts in North Carolina say safe storage, keeping your guns in a safe or using a gun lock is one answer. Up to 32% of unintentional firearm deaths, suicides, homicides for kids could be prevented if households with guns started safely storing their guns. Kella Hatcher and the North Carolina Child Fatality Task Force have been pushing for a statewide safe storage initiative for years. In 2023, lawmakers approved a two-year safe storage campaign. We've been able to find common ground among all sorts of people on this issue, and that includes legislators. However, those same lawmakers did not fund the plan, something the group is pushing for in 2024. 
the Department of Public Safety found a year's worth of federal dollars to launch the NC Safe campaign. North Carolina, we have a problem. Guns are falling into the wrong hands. Make sure you secure your firearms effectively. So far, they've given out tens of thousands of gun locks and hundreds of gun safes. We just ordered another 25,000 locks and we're distributing them right now to local health departments. We are working with a lot of the typical gun rights groups across the state of North Carolina on this campaign and a lot of the shooting ranges across the state because look, the audience we're trying to reach are gun owners. It doesn't do me any good to talk about safe storage with people that don't own, own a gun. We bring this up at every single well child visit. Dr. Brian Eichner gives out free gun locks to parents of his patients and talks about gun safety with his families. In the 17 years I've been doing this, I've only had one family really question me why I was asking. He does it because the leading cause of death among young people is guns. It's due to the fact that the rates are rising, but also due to the fact that we've had successes in decreasing deaths from motor vehicle accidents. Experts say when it comes to safe storage, there are lessons to be learned by the interventions made to motor vehicles in the U.S. to save lives. We didn't take people's cars away. We didn't tell people they couldn't drive. But we said, how do we make the roads safer? Thinking about guardrails, thinking about lighting. How do we make cars safer? And that has resulted now a 70% decrease in um, death from car crashes. I think we can apply that same model when thinking about firearm violence. We're hoping that the General Assembly will help fund this moving forward. We're asking for about two and a half million dollars, which will help us buy more gun locks, more gun safes, but also um, keep the messaging out there. And while they've had support from both sides of the political spectrum, there is support from both sides of the tragedy in Fayetteville too. Moms like the babysitter, dads like Fawn, both saying proper safe storage could have saved Genesis and saved them all a lifetime of heartbreak. I want to do something to promote gun safety. If you get a safe, change the code. Don't leave it the generic code as it comes. Store your ammunition and your guns in separate places. Genesis Dockery is a reason that, that safe gun ownership is required because irresponsible gun ownership leads to events like this. That pure love, that, that type of love is, is how we unite this world, how we come together. Thank you, sir. We were with the Dockery family when they returned to Genesis and Amara School, Riverside Christian Academy in Fayetteville. Her family and friends are struggling with the eight-year-old's death. But they allowed us to do a balloon release for Genesis. Dr. Signs, the principal, his idea was, hey, let's allow them to write a letter, their own little letter, Let's put it in a balloon and release it. Here. Hold on to them. It's a windy day. <laughs> no, hold on. I said I'm <laughs> this isn't just our loss. Y'all were friends with Genesis. Y'all made memories with Genesis. All right? Um, on three, we're going to say, we love you, Genesis, and we're going to let them go, all right? One. Two, three. Love you, Genesis. I love you, Genesis. Mine's the highest. They don't even know it, but it's it's therapy to have those feelings and to release those feelings upwards. So we're seeing love for our daughter by these kids. hard going to see a child <laughs> at a cemetery knowing she did nothing wrong but be a child knowing she loved so much and that was taken from us.